everybody, my name is Luke Mar, and this is Hot Low Mode. And today on Hot Low Mode, we are coming to you with an Emmy's 2022 red carpet fashion roast and review. If you love Hot Low Mode, if you want to watch more of it, hit the subscribe button. You know what I mean? If you like the video, comment, you know, all of the above. It helps the channel out. It's important. There was quite a lot of looks to be discussing in shows like Hacks, Euphoria, Succession, Ted Lasso. There was just, there was a lot going on. First up, we have Alexandra Daddario, and she was wearing Dior. Now, in Maria Grazia Curie fashion, we have a asymmetrical draped gown with waist seam that's rather unsightly. Listen, she's been doing this thing where instead of putting a belt, she puts a little sort of braided strip of fabric around the waist. That's nice. I'm really not super duper opposed to that. I also think it's really difficult when you're doing like a fully draped sort of style to then cut it at the waist and sort of have that really reprehensible seam very visible. So we have this sort of diagonal drape one shoulder moment and then it falls into a vertical sort of skirt. And in reality, it's made up of a fishnet style, at least the skirt is, that's full of little pearlescent embellishments and it's the same thing sort of up top although I will say as we sort of get towards the waist it gets a lot less dense in terms of the embellishments. Listen, I would say probably a little bit more exciting from Alexandra Daddario would probably be helpful for her because it's just blah Dior that you could wear to anything. Would I say that this is exactly something that you want to like make a mark at the Emmys with? No, I don't think so. Listen, I'm not saying that she had to go out and do something crazy kooky over the top, but something a little bit more memorable, something that also would wash you out a lot less, probably would help. And again, you're on a TV show about wealthy families. Method dressing, never hurt anybody, you know what I mean? Next up, we had Amanda Seyfried and she was wearing Armani Privé. Now, it's essentially a beautiful, strapless, pinkish purple? I would go like a lilac -y. kind of embroidered or embellished dress that has a pleat fan that jets out from the neckline in again that sort of light beautiful style and then we can see that it's full of embellishments they look like squares but they're actually not they're kind of like squircles square and circles put together that are joined in a diagonal crisscross sort of fashion style experience. In reality, it's a pretty dress. It's not really super over the top. It's not super crazy, but at the same time, it fits really, really well. This Armani proves that like, you know, you don't need a waist seam. It's, it's kind of crazy, I know. But listen, we can see that at the waist, it tapers, but it doesn't constrict. There isn't some sort of crazy corset underneath that's really holding everything in there. We can also just see that along the hips, it just, it fits really, really beautifully. It hits the floor. It sort of has a chain mail feeling and experience to it, especially the way that it hits the ground and it sort of pools just slightly, slightly. The color I think is really, really lovely. It's not too overbearing, overwhelming. It's just nice, pretty. I think it's a beautiful tone that plays well on the skin. And again, it's Armani Privé. You know, it's not gonna be, oh my God, but it's definitely gonna be, oh my God, there's a difference. Next up we have Andrew Garfield and he wore Xenia. Now this is a crisp white suit. I was gonna say it's a linen, but it's definitely not a linen. It's some sort of printed silk or maybe printed cotton, because there seems to be some sort of motif, but it's very, very faint. It's essentially a white button-down shirt underneath, so it sort of pops very, very slightly against that off-white color. There's a matching pant with front crease, and then the black shoes. I don't love the shoes. The shoes could be so much better, Andrew. Xenia, I know that there's some sort of boot somewhere in all of those stores, I know. Listen, it's not really that memorable, not really that exciting. Do I think it's very Xenia? It's a brand that, again, is crisp, clean, it doesn't try to be fashion. It's just suiting that's nice. For some reason on the carpet, at least like the carpets that I discuss, it's always a little bit blah. And then he's not on the carpet and he's wearing like crazy over the top ridiculous stuff and people are like, you don't talk about this. And I'm like, he doesn't wear it around me, so sorry. So that's how I feel. Andrew, just one cook crazy for me. Your mother, who's not your mother, but your mother. Next up, we have Ayo Edebiri, and she is wearing John Batista Volley. Now listen, this is a little Jamba A-line dress. It has little bows at the shoulders that sort of attach a little chiffon cape, and then it's in a light pink all throughout, and that's the thing that I like. The actual construction of the dress is in a sort of reflectivity silk, 
and it's this light, light pink. But then we have the cape, which it's in a much more muted fabric. And again, that gives that flow. It doesn't have that shine, that reflectiveness to it, but we've still matched the fabric. Like it's not that hard. On the carpet, it always seems like, oh my God, what a travesty, what a difficult match colors. It's not that hard, Jamti Zavali is proving it. We can see that there are white 3D flowers that have been appliqued on. They are intriguing. They look almost like cut paper, but again, 3D. So they have that sort of feeling. They move almost along the dark, you know, at least on the bodice and then sort of hit the waist, do a cute little cover of the seam because we can see it on the side that there is a seam and then sort of run down. So again, I think it definitely could be a better execution in the way that we're doing it. But do I appreciate that at least we're trying to cover that seam somewhat without a belt. We trying to then take the covering of that seam and make it a part of the rest of the dress. Yeah. Do I wish maybe that instead of the pink bows, we had maybe had flowers up here to bring those all together? Yeah, absolutely, I do. I think it would have had a little bit more something. Maybe we had like done the hem of the train and the flowers too, you know, applique them all over. But at least I appreciate that we're trying to cover it up with something that's not just about. Next up we have Christina Ricci and she is wearing Fendi. Now this is from the Fendi Haute Couture collections. It's a halter style in what look like bugle beads and they're all different colors. So it goes from sort of silver to I would say a bronze. It's not exactly gold, which I kind of appreciate, but the bugle beads give like a really intriguing texture to the dress. And then again, the dress is very, very slinky. It's very, very sexy. It's not some sort of very rigid tailored experience, which I think you can come to expect from a Kim Jones. And I think that it's a nice sort of movement and improvement by Kim that he can do something that is fitted, that does have a red carpet flair, that does have a sort of sex appeal, that doesn't have to be tailored and very line driven. I think the matching bag is also great. I love it. Again, I think that texture is really, really beautiful. And I think oftentimes we see gold and silver, we see big sort of sequins or paillettes, but it's nice to see the return of the bugle beat. You know what I mean? The boogie woogie, din, din, din. I think the way that it hits the floor is nice. I think the way that it fits her is beautiful. It exposes some waist, but then it comes back down. It sort of fits at the booty really nicely. And then it has a little bit of an edge. It's not strict. It's not, oh, you know what I mean? It's not like, oh, which I think it's nice. Listen, is it so, oh my God, memorable? No, but do I think it's a great dress and one of the more interesting without being avant-garde? Yeah, I do. Next up we have Elle Fanning who cannot help herself and I love it. I, I honestly thrive off of it. Gives me sustenance. She is wearing a custom dress by Sharon Long. Now, if you don't know who Sharon Long is, she is the costume designer for the TV show, The Great, who Elle stars in. It is a beautiful strapless gown. It's floor length. It's pretty fitted, except sort of at like the hip thigh area. But at the top, we have a beautiful black wasp waisted bodice. And there's a little bit of floral sort of detailing at the neckline to sort of create a half cup. I think the bodice is beautiful. I think that light pink plays really, really well off of the black. And then we can see at the waist, a train forms again. Listen, Robert de Givenchy, Sabrina, Audrey Hepburn, it all comes out. There is this long train that sort of juts out and creates its own ambiance and allows us to see the front of the skirt. And we can see that the train on the outer side is black and then the actual lining, the interface of it is this light, light pink that matches in with the cuffs at the top. I do kind of wish the skirt was a little bit more fitted. You know what I mean? I think that of course she has to move and I get that, but we can see that there's kind of a blobby shape to it. And that is the one thing here that's really throwing me off. But I think the train is gorgeous. I love the sort of simple play off of the pink and the black. The little bows that sit right under the armpits are also just like a nice little cute detail. Hats off to Elle Fanning. I think she appreciates Sharon Long and the work that costume designers from movies and television do. And it's nice to sort of see that whole vibe and appreciation for the work that these other designers that are not fashion house and fashion brand designers do. She knows how to make a statement, both in terms of what she wears and also who she wears. Next up we have Ho Yeon Jung and she is wearing Louis Vuitton. I thought it was Chanel. Maybe I should just say that it's Chanel and make me feel better. It's an embroidered dress that is meant to look like a tweed, I believe, like a boucle tweed. And so I appreciate that it's full sequins. It really does give the idea that 
it's sequins and it feels very Karl Lagerfeld or Virginie Viard, I guess I should more so say, for Chanel. There's a high slit, there's a halter sort of moment to it. It's certainly something, it's certainly a choice. Do I think that the dress in and of itself is just kind of ugly? Yeah. Do I appreciate what we were trying to do? Absolutely. Do I think that technically the motif and the facade, the tweed through the sequins is really cool? Absolutely. Do I think that the dress just sort of falls flat? Absolutely. There's just nothing really exciting about it. I think it just feels a little bit old lady. It's hard to make tweed feel like young and new and fun unless you like do it in a mini skirt. Why did we choose? Somebody tell me, please. I'd like to know. Next up we have Issa Rae and she is wearing Sergio Hudson. Now floor length sort of gown in white for the most part with a black piping that goes along the neckline as well as the sort of keyhole cutout and then a sort of black band that curves, accentuates pelvic hip area. And then it sort of has a black little train experience too. Sergio Hudson is a brand, if you don't know, that is very much so sportswear oriented, does really nice classic sort of suits, really nice sort of very flowy sort of gowns. It's not really super duper fashion. I would say it's more sort of in that vein of a, a Michael Kors, a Donna Karen, a very early sort of Calvin Klein, where it's just really nicely done, nicely made clothes. Listen, do I think the dress fits? Sure. Do I think though that the dress design and sort of concept is amazing? I think that the curved band is, it's all right, but it's sort of a, a, an odd placement. It doesn't really accentuate the hip area in the way that maybe one would hope for. I think the keyhole cutout with the black sort of piping is nice, but the sort of buttoned neckline is also rather intriguing and sort of renders the keyhole cutout useless or seems unnecessary, I would say. And the black train situation too, I just think falls kind of flat. It's in a weird place. On one end, it's not some amazing over the top, beautiful, big train. And on the other end, it's not just a simple dress that falls, you know, flatly hits the floor and that's it. No, it's kind of like in an in-between experience. It's like a weirdly short train that just doesn't feel very necessary if we weren't really going to go for it. I appreciate that it's there, but I think that going forward, I'd like a little bit more excitement on the red carpet, at least from Sergio Hudson. Next up we have Jasmine Savoy Brown and she is wearing Christopher Kane. Now this is a beautiful dress from Christopher Kane's fall 2022 collection. It's made up of leather. So it's a cutout leather bodice, keyhole cutout, waist sort of cutouts. And then there is a lot of gold banding going on here. So we can see it sort of cuts across the cutouts at the waist. It actually holds as the strap. And then we have a sort of little bouffant 1950s skirt Honestly, I think it's lovely. The fact that it's done in this leather and with these sort of very quote unquote exposing cutouts, but with a silhouette that is this very moralistic, integrity driven 1950s feel, I think is a fun way that Christopher Kane plays off of both S&M sexual sort of culture and at the same time, a sort of classic 1950s idea of what the perfect woman is supposed to wear and supposed to look like think that the little heels, although I don't love them from a personal standpoint, I think that they play into this idea of the aesthetic very, very smartly. I think it's a great dress. I think it's fun. I think it's cool. I think that it both feels Emmys enough, but at the same time, just a little bit pushing the boundaries enough to make it memorable. Next up we have Julia Garner and she is wearing Gucci. Now this is from their resort 2023 collection. Love it. Absolutely love it. It's a great dress from a collection that I think got a little bit less press than something like a normal sort of collection like the Gucci and Adidas fall 2022 collection. And I think Julia Garner hit it out of the park here. Now listen, she's removed kind of the crazy over the top elements from the runway, there's no gloves, there's no bag, there's no big sunglasses, and she's changed the shoes up as well to be a sort of platform. But beige sort of shoe to keep it simple. I'm gonna go with like a brown velvet, at least from what I can see. Looks brown to me. It has a sort of little bit of a padded shoulder, but it's not in your face over the top, you know, 1980s. Ugh. But there's a diamond cutout 
to expose the stomach and the belly button. And then it is full of silver embroidered flowers that start sort of at the neck and then sort of fall down. And then we can see that it sort of starts at the thighs and descends down to the end of the dress. Honestly, great dress. Super easy, super simple, super memorable at the same time. It sort of has, again, that old world fabric of like a velvet and the beautiful embroidery. That diamond cutout just makes it super strange and memorable and exciting. And shout out to Julia Garner, always a fashion girl. And I love it. Next up, we have Carrie Washington, and she is wearing Ellie Saab. Now, listen, Carrie, this is kind of her vibe. It is a cocktail dress with large floral and feather plumes jutting out from the right side of the, the bust and sort of creating a shoulder off the shoulder strap, I believe. And then on the left hip and sort of thigh area, we can see that there is the feather floral plumage jumping out as well. There's a sort of draped neckline, a draped skirt, and then a large sort of train. It feels very like what Carrie does. It's a little bit boring in my opinion. I just feel like I've seen this from Carrie and I wish that she would push it a little bit. I just wish that there was one little avant-garde element because I feel like she always goes very sort of pretty and then we try to do something a little bit crazy. So I think the feathers here are like the crazy element, but I don't think it really feels like something we haven't seen before and so it makes it harder to love it. Then we had Laverne Cox. She is wearing Jean-Paul Gaultier Haute Couture by Olivier Roustan. Now listen, it's a beautiful dress. These big, beautiful bouffant hips are amazing. They sort of create like a pannier effect. And the dress essentially is full of these zippers that denote a conical bra shape. Very Jean-Paul Gaultier signature silhouette. The zippers also sort of create this idea of deconstruction. And even if they're not actually zippers, they're rather, I believe, embroidery. It's meant to look like zippers. And again, I think that's the fun thing about JPG is it's a brand that sort of always is pushing the envelope and using sort of elements of the way clothing is made, whether it's pins, pin cushions, zippers, seams, stitches to sort of create the motif and the sort of aura of a dress. Uh, listen, shout out Laverne. She's stunning. She is Laverne. The dress is Shirley. I'm thoroughly entertained. I think the idea of going for the cocktail dress version of this also is really, really great. I think it adds a little bit more of a movement. Again, she's working the red carpet, so I appreciate that. She's like, listen, I'm gonna be the one that's sort of serving the look next to whoever I'm, I'm, I'm standing next to. The attention should be on them. Laverne Cox, good for her, happy for her, proud of her, great dress. Am I okay with this? Actually, I'm rather happy. Then we had Lee Jung Jae and he is wearing Gucci. Now, I believe this is a custom suit and if it is not, from the runway, it's a custom version of something from the runway. What we have here is a little black blazer, and by little I mean, now we can see that there is a leather trim that is actually studded with these silver studs that runs throughout the lapel, the pockets, and the hem of the blazer. And then it's a simple pant that sort of tapers in towards the bottom, a simple shoe, blue shirt, black tie. Listen, I love the blazer. I think it's fun, I think it's cool. I think it's a nice way to sort of play on, again, the traditional suit without it feeling too boring. And it's not something you see all the time. The pants, they're okay. I think they're a little bit bagalacious. Maybe just like a little studding at the hem, you know, would be kind of nice. The shoes could be better too. But Lee Jung Jae, for the longest time, was doing it really simple. And I was like, step it up. But he stepped it up. This is it. This is fun, this is funky, it's intriguing. I'm proud, thank you, huge fan of this look. Let's keep going. Next up we have Lily James and she is wearing Versace. Now this is the Atelier Versace collection, or at least this is a dress from Atelier Versace, which is Versace's sort of haute couture line. It's not really shown during the haute couture season anymore. They are made to measure gowns. They're beautiful, they're stunning. This looks like, in my opinion, a copper draped version of an Oraton dress. Now Oraton is a chainmail that Versace developed and it's become a pretty synonymous house code and textile in the house of Versace. Starting at the top, we can see that there are the Medusa head sort of clips that are holding the straps up. It's a little bit of a shaved neckline. We can see that there's some exposure, sort of coming in there's a little bit of a crest and then the other breast sixth grade science taught me well we can also see that there is a little bit of what looks like sequining sort of jutting out and sort of creating more of a coppery effect but in reality as we move down we can see that it fits beautifully like it fits that's what we're asking for and i'm happy to see it and then we can see the drape of it we can actually see that this oraton is drape, which I'm gonna say honestly looks stunning. Listen, it's a textile that, you know, with leather. It's not really that often that you drape it. I would say the same thing goes on with chainmail. Usually you let it fall just sort of to the floor and you let gravity do its job. 
But here, the fact that we've draped it, I think it's nice. I think it adds like a cool effect. Again, the fit is still there because it really, really encompasses the hips so, so beautifully. And then falls, pulls at the floor just a little bit. It's very simple, I would say, in terms of silhouette and in terms of color, but I would say that technically it's very advanced and it's very strong look. The thing is, when you have something kind of simple in terms of silhouette, you want it to fit really, really well because it's simple and I think that's been accomplished. But at the same time, the textile is not an easy textile to work with. And then to sort of add that drape in and to make it just sort of fall beautifully and for it to just like fit so well, shout out. Lily James killed it, Versace killed it, Donatella Versace killed it. Proud girl vibes. Next up we have Lizzo and she is wearing John Batista Volley. Now this is from the Spring 2022 Haute Couture Collection. It is a large tool experience, which is a John Batista Volley signature. We all know that. Is it the craziest John Batista Volley look I've ever seen? No. But do I think that it's a fun look and that Lizzo is carrying it really, really beautifully? Absolutely. It's a high-low dress. The neckline, roofed. And then we can see that there is a horizontal pulling of the bodice underneath just really really shortly and then when it hits the waist kind of area it falls vertically we can see the sleeves also fall vertically so it creates like a beautiful curtain facade situation but right above the knees it gets cut and we can see that there is a train at the back but Lizzo's legs are visible we still have the silhouette up top that is very very strong and very very beautiful but with Lizzo she's moving and she's grooving so we can see that the the, the, the vertical sort of tool swags are falling out and over and it's stunning. It's a great dress. I think it's really beautiful. Listen, I think John Batista Valley's goal should be and always needs to be sort of working that tool in ways that are fun and funky and new and doesn't make it stale. I think that the silhouette does that really, really well. It's not just the usual tool big gown. Rather, it keeps that silhouette of the big tool gown, but diversifies it by making it high low and giving it a rather fun and flowing train feel. Also, Lizzo is a fashion girl, and I said it, and I'm standing by it. Then we had Meg Stalter, and she's wearing Norma Kamali. Listen, I love this. I think it's fun. I think the beautiful little sheer with the gorgeous sort of flower weave in it is nice. I like the fact that she went kind of radical, fully sheer. Honestly, I think with people that are not sort of this model size that we sort of expect, somebody would be like, this is bad. Who wants to see that? It's like, I do. It's me. I, I am, I'm the audience. Honestly, I think it's fun. I think it's cool. I think it defies sort of the idea of like what bodies that are not model size so should wear. I'm all about it. I think that it's a nice Norma Kamali. I think Norma Kamali is a great designer to tap for something like this. And I also think that honestly, like the little sort of tapestry-esque florals and foliage is nice and sweet. Would I maybe have removed the flower, you know, right at the middle of the neckline? Sure. But besides that, I think it's nice, I think it's fun, I think it's a little bit radical. I'm into it. Next up, we have Nicholas Holt. He's wearing Dior. It's essentially a crop double-breasted blazer, which I actually like. But the flares, I don't know. The flares, I'm not really sold on there. You know what I mean? They're just a little bit awkward to me. Flares are hard. They're tough. The thing is, if you taper them at the thigh, I mean, I know that's what makes them flares, but like, it's just, not every look is allowed to flare. It's not that it fits poorly. I think it fits great, honestly. Like, I think it's a really, really nicely done doer look. It's just the flares that throw me off personally. I think they fit well. I think they did what they needed to do. It's just a me personal thing. So, good for him. Next up, we have Nicole Byer. I have to talk about this because it makes me mad. So we have a little dark purple or like indigo button up top crop that also has tails but my issue is like this would have been great but we wore a pair of high-waisted wide leg pants that are a completely different shade why the thing is the crop top with the sort of button up and then the trains would have made it great and if we had a matching pair of pants lovely gorgeous i think it would have absolutely fit 100 percent and i would not have said what i'm gonna say which is the fact that it's a different color makes it much more casual because it's like oh i'm just you know pairing things today to go do whatever if you had had the same color pant we would have been like oh my god wow like cool like it set sweet lovely yeah but no why and also like the fabric is different like the top is a silk the bottom is maybe a silk but it, just, it doesn't look as silky and reflective as the top it's just it's a, it's a waste, you know what I mean? Like why not just do the pant in the same shade? Nailed it. 
Next up we have Quinta Brunson and she is wearing Dolce & Gabbana. Now this is a custom look I believe. So we have a bodice in a sort of copper. Copper really is, copper's in. And it's made up of a bunch of different sequins and then other paillette sort of appliques that sort of fan. And then a sort of draped silk skirt. Listen, I love Quinta, I'm very happy for her. I think that's amazing, Abbott, great show. I just wish it wasn't Dolce, you know what I mean? Like somebody else get on the fact that Abbott Elementary is amazing fashion people she looks gorgeous and i'm happy that the dress fits i'm fine with it it's just dolce and gabbana so i get that they dress a lot of different people so it's i'm happy for quinta she deserves to have a custom look and to win an emmy but somebody else come on do your job next up we have rachel brosnahan and she's wearing pamela Rowland now it is a purple floor length fitted gown that has a deep, deep plunge, and it's full of pearl appliques that move vertically and horizontally exclusively at the waist, and with little sort of clusters and some sort of netted fabric jetting out of the clusters. I don't hate it. I don't love it. I'm not like, oh my god, wow. So memorable, but I think the color is really, really nice and the fit is good. I think that the motif of the pearl clusters is a to each their own kind of vibe. You know what I mean? It's not me, but some people must love it and that's fine. I think it fits. I think that's okay. I think the pearl verticalness is okay too. I don't hate it. I like the color. I think it looks really, really good on her. I think it's a gorgeous, gorgeous color. I'm fine with it. Next up we have Sandra O, oh, and she is wearing Rodarte now. It is a purple sequin blazer and pant and then a little draped silky blouse. I think it's okay. Purple seems to be in. I think it looks nice. I think it's fine. Rodarte likes a sequin. They're not really a big like brand, I would say. So I'm intrigued by that. I think the drape and the liquidity, that little silky top is nice. I think the color obviously could like, you can't really match like, a silk to a sequin. I think there's exceptions to the rule. This is one of those times. And I genuinely think it allows for a little bit of a pop which is cool as well. The pant fit is okay. It's decent. It's a wide leg. The blazer off the shoulders choices, but it's fine. You gotta see more at the top. This is different for Rodarte and I kind of appreciate it. Next up we have Sarah Paulson. She is wearing Louis Vuitton. Now this is a custom look. We're back to purple having the moment, I guess. I, I have no idea. The idea of it is great. I just wish the colors matched. It's like a navy blue architectural top. It essentially is a piece of fabric that has a whole cut in the neck and then sort of folds over and allows the arms to sort of move very freely. I would say it's part of Nicolas Jasquier's whole futuristic sort of forward thinking vibe and aesthetic that he's been doing for quite some time, I'd say like the past year or so. And then a high-waisted pleated skirt with a flounce and a leather studded belt. The skirt's great. I like the skirt, even with the flounce of pleat. I think it's okay. I think it fits in again with that sort of like futuristic Here's George Jetson, his wife Judy, kind of vibe, and that's fine. It's a little bit more the Matrixy, I could say, than like the Jetsons, but I'm okay with that. I just wish that the colors matched. The belt feels a little bit unnecessary to me, but maybe the belt is trying to like play into the, the choker, maybe. But yeah, I saw what we're going for. We didn't get to the finish line. We still had a lot to go. Next up is Selena Gomez. She wore Celine. Now this is a custom look, I believe. It is a fully crystallized, is it a halter? It's not a halter. It's like a turtleneck, sleeveless turtleneck dress that's fitted. The thing about it is I wanna like it, I do, because it's simple, it's Celine, I get it. The one thing I'm not understanding is we have opaque from the neck to like the knees, and then there's sheer. Why is it sheer? It looks like she's wearing a bib underneath, and I don't understand, I'm not understanding why we did that. Like that's the one questionable choice I think that's going on here is, why does it look like we just never finished the lining of the dress? That's my one issue. And for Selena, I feel like, again, like we should be having like a moment. Only murders in the building, but not. Eddie Saman, one time, literally did a shirt that had like blood stains and, and crystals and sequins. And why not do that? Only murders in the building, method dressing. Oh my God, that would be crazy. I don't know, peeps. I don't know. Whoever's doing the research over there in Selena Gomez world, step it up. Come on, please. It would have been great. It would have been so chic. It would have been so elegant. But no, I'm really mad about that now because that would have been the goddamn moment. I would have eaten it up. It's coming from me, but I would have eaten it up. Now, my real issue is there's no blood splatter in front of the heart in crystals. So there's that. But secondly, again, I don't understand why the lining looks the way that the lining looks. It's upsetting me because otherwise it could just be like a nice fitted 
Celine Gam, but it's now it's I'm confused. Next up we have Cheryl Lee Ralph and she is wearing Brandon Blackwood. Brandon Blackwood is a designer who makes handbags from my understanding for the most part. This is the first time that he's ever done a custom gown, which I like to see. This is a custom fitted velvet gown that is ruched up the sides. It has a little train and then there's a lining of an orangey sort of silk that matches her little crystallized handbag. I like it. I'm sold on it. I think the fact that it fits her beautifully, I have to say, is nice. The slit, I'm fine with it. It allows the actual lining of the dress to be seen more and play into the bag. And the fact that Brandon Blackwood is an accessories designer. The dress, I would say, we kind of maybe want to be like a little bit secondary to a degree. And I get that. I understand it. You know, tying everything back to the bag, that's what you want to do. I got it. But I don't think that they've skimped necessarily on the dress. I don't think that it fitted poorly. I don't think that it looks bad. I don't think it's the best thing in the entire world, but like, listen, give it time for a designer to develop that. You know what I mean? Like brand is known for its accessories. It's like, oh, go yar, make a gown. Nah, uh, you know, it's gonna take time. So I'm happy to see it. I think she looks nice. It's fine. I'm okay with it. Next up we have Sydney Sweeney. She's wearing Oscar de la Renta. This is a custom dress. Now it is a fitted gown, except I would say that it's a little bit exaggerated. It's in a silk that has full silver floral embroidery and a jutting out train. So it seems like the Sabrina dress from Hubert de Givenchy is on everybody's minds. Everybody's like, holy shit, we messed up at the Met Gala, so we're gonna, we're gonna keep it moving. I will say though, for Laura Kim and Fernando Garcia, who are the creative directors, this is very much an Oscar silhouette. Always has been and kind of always will be. Oscar de la Renta, if you did not know, worked for Cristobal Balenciaga, not at Balenciaga, but at Isa, which was the Spanish version of Balenciaga because Balenciaga was Paris. Isa was based in Spain. And the thing is, Balenciaga was very into Victorian dress. So these styles that emanate from the sort of Victorian age and also the Gilded Age as well, were something that he worked on. And then I think Oscar de la Renta sort of continued that as time went on. So we can see that there are images of these sort of looks from Oscar. It's not some like crazy, oh my God, we've never seen this before. Like it's very much so a part of Oscar's DNA. I think the embroidery is nice. I think it's pretty. I think the fact that the sort of silver embroidery pops off this very light silver silk is sweet. It's okay. I think Sydney looks good. I'm fine with it. It's nice. It's a nice dress. Very pretty, very rich, expensive, monarchical fabrication. It's sweet. Do I think that the hips on it are a little bit big? Yeah, and it's not that I don't think Sydney should look like that, but it looks a little bit exaggerated, I would say, to a degree. And maybe that's just because it's sort of keeping all of the bustled element of it there, but Besides that, I think it looks good. I think it's great. Next up, we have Tahib Jamo, and he is wearing Dior. Now, this is from the Fall 2022 Dior Men collection. I would say probably the best Dior Men collection that Kim Jones has done. It's beautiful, stunning, still think about it. And essentially what has happened here is we were seeing a tailored suit that fits him beautifully. The sleeves are a little bit crunkly, wrunkly, but I'm okay with that because you know what, the draping of the actual jacket is great. But what Kim Jones did was he took a sort of very tailored version of suit and then sort of gave it a much more draped sort of feeling, which if you look back at Christian Dior collections by Monsieur Christian Dior, there's a lot of draping. There's whole swaths of it, swaths, like 10 years of draping. So in reality, what Kim did was sort of bring draping to tailoring, which those two things usually don't come together all that much. So the fact that it was also done for menswear is also great. I think the suit color is beautiful. I think the fact that the drape was sort of tied on the side takes away a little bit of the excitement to it. Whereas I think when you look at the runway version, it very much so is sort of gathered right at the center and sort of falls away. And I think that would have been much more exciting. So whoever styled this, the pants are okay. I think they fit nice. The boots, is that a boot? It's a boot. Oh my God. See, I love this man. I do. I really do. Truly, really, 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 truly do. The black shirt underneath, here for it. Happy with it. Great. You know, if he had just worn like the, the Dior Birkenstocks, that would have been like, oh my God, Sam. You can do no wrong. I love that he went for it. I love that he did the moment. I like that this is the first time I'm ever talking about So he on Hot La Mode and it's a great first start. So I'm very proud, very happy, can't wait. And finally, without further ado, Zendaya. I mean like, Zendaya. Zendaya is wearing a custom dress from Valentino, which is a brand that she's the ambassador for. But this dress is actually a black satin gown. It's strapless, it's gorgeous. It has a large sort of train, which I feel like with the Emmys we've seen Zendaya sort of look and work with time and time again. 
But what's happened here is Pier Paolo Piccioli and La Roche came together to be inspired by a fall 1987 gown. It's a red gown that's fitted. It's a little bit more trumpet style than it is big ball gown. What they did is they essentially just took the inspiration of that dress and sort of reworked it to be a little bit more intriguing. Now it has this beautiful bodice. It looks almost like a cuirass bodice, which essentially sort of falls down to like the hip is form fitting and is meant to sort of make the wearer look longer. But what they've done is instead the, the bodice itself is very, very tight. There's a sort of little simple bow right at the waistline, which is a Valentino sort of staple. And then we can see that this flounce or, or peplum flounces out over the actual skirt. And then the skirt sort of descends down, big, beautiful, a little bit of a train. It's very simple in that sort of way. She has a beautiful sort of necklace on. Zendaya looks stunning. It's a gorgeous dress. I'm happy to see it. I like the fact that there's inspiration of it, which is vintage Valentino. It's a cool way to sort of rework house staples and sort of house pieces from years ago and sort of bring that into the forefront of younger customers and younger sort of viewers' minds. And considering we've been seeing so much of this bright Valentino pink, it's nice to sort of see this black sort of emerge on the carpet. Zendaya looks beautiful. She looks nice. She looks happy. I'm for it. But that is the end of this video. So let's talk about the best and the worst. For the best, I'm going to put Elle Fanning. I'm going to put Julia Garner, Laverne Cox, Lizzo. For worst, Sarah Paulson. Got to put Nicole Byer, Ho Yi Jung. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. I will see you guys on the next video. We have Venice is still gonna do. Fashion week is here. I'm dying inside. I will see you guys soon. Thank you again so much for watching and TTY.